Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I want to talk about the different types of visual aids that are out there. I've talked about a few previously and I will link those downstairs. I know I've talked about now and next boards, so, and I do have a video coming up, I think it might have gone up already, about timetables, so check out the description. So visual supports can be used to communicate with people that are on the spectrum and also can support them to communicate with you. They are adaptable and you can change them and make them personalised. They are portable so you can take them with you everywhere you go and they can be used in most situations really. Visual supports can provide structure, routines and they can encourage independence and they can help build people's confidence and self-esteem really and improve understanding. Having this um, can also reduce frustration because it can help you know someone understand what you're saying. If you don't have a visual aid and you're unable to talk then you know how are you meant to communicate with someone and tell them what you want. So you know it kind of gets rid of that frustration and anxiety about communicating with people. It also provides you with opportunities to interact with others whether that's other people on the spectrum or everyone else, it doesn't matter. So some types of visual supports are tactile symbols, objects of reference, so if you wanted to show someone that you were going swimming you might bring them their swimming costume or some goggles and, sh and they would know by seeing that that they're going swimming. You might also show them a picture of the swimming pool or a symbol or something else at the same time. Photographs, short videos, real objects or tiny versions of the real object, pictures, coloured pictures as well, line drawings, symbols and pecs and written words. You don't have to just use one of these, you can use them at the same time. So sometimes at school I use a now and next board, I also use objects of reference at the same time and that can help a lot. So you know, you are allowed to use more than one type of visual support with someone, just make sure that it's not too overwhelming. You don't want to have five types of visual supports in their face. Visual aids don't actually have to be real objects, they can be and that can be really helpful, but they also could be printed out objects, symbols, or you could actually be showing someone a picture on your phone or your smartphone and tablet or computer. Visual supports can be used in a variety of different ways, um, for example, it could be to communicate a single message with someone. In my class, on our classroom door, we have a toilet symbol and some of our students are able to independently go up, take the toileting symbol off and give it to us. So that is their way of vis using their visual symbols um, to tell us that they need the toilet. Other examples are to, you know, if they're frustrated, they can show you a symbol to say, I'm annoyed, I'm upset, I need to talk. And that could be showing, you know, the symbol could be a feeling card. If they have a communication book inside, it could have lots of feelings. So when they are upset, they can just take off the one that says upset and show it to you. Another way to use visual support is in combination with a daily timetable, schedule, sequence or reward chart. In my class, we use all of those. You know, we have a timetable out on show all the time so anyone comes into our class and all of the pupils have access to that timetable and they can visually see what we are doing. We also have a scheduling strip for one of our pupils, so she does look at the big timetable but she does need to have her own one that she can take off herself and she can see it. And we do use reward charts as well. Not every class in my school does all of those things and they may adapt it and change it to the needs of the pupils that are in their class. Another way to use a visual support is to make a choice, so if like sometimes I will show a student in my class two symbols. Um, so I'll show them the symbol of our classroom and then a symbol of a different activity. I'll be like, what do you want? Do you want to go to this sensory room or do you want to stay in the classroom? And then they will give me the one that they want and they can understand that. But you know, you need to make sure that they are at the level where they're able to choose from a choice of two symbols or pecs. And the last way um, or example is to illustrate a social story for them or a comic strip conversation. Examples of visual supports. So basic symbols to allow a person to express an opinion. We ask them in circle time, are you happy or sad? And they're able to show us. Calendars to prepare things for people. This could be for things that are outside of their usual routine, but you could have a calendar to prepare them for Christmas. 
because it is a change, you know, you're going from this structured time when you, you're at school, you know exactly what's going on, to you have like two weeks off and, you know, it's kind of a bit all over the place. So that could really stress them out. Choice boards, now and next boards, and first and then sequences. Key phrase symbols like I want, so you have um, I want on a board and then they can put whatever they want afterwards. So I want ribbon or I want cake, you know, things like that. Labels for objects, morning schedules, photos and maps. So when we're going on trips, especially last year, there was people in my class that really needed photos. So we would show him pictures of the location that we were going to so he could visually see it. And we also use that for if there's people that's leaving school and going to somewhere different, they will have pictures of what their school looks like so they can have a look at it anytime during the day and they can ask questions as well. If you're using PowerPoints in your lessons, make sure that the font is big enough for people to see. Keep the background simple. Use animations only when they're needed and try and make things as visual as possible. But that also depends on the type of visual learner that they are. I've just done a video on that somewhere here. Don't make the writing too small that no one can read it. Don't have like a funny background and that's something that's really bright and distracting from the information that they actually need to see. Don't overdo it with the animations because it can get very distracting. And don't use like endless slides of lists and things because you know that's going to get boring and they're not going to pay attention. In my class we have some students that just you can, uh, depending on like what mood they're in, you can get them to concentrate for like five to ten minutes and then they'll be gone and you won't really get their attention back for a bit. So make sure that whatever lesson you're doing is suited for the class. You can use lots of different things to help in lessons, projectors, boards like whiteboards or blackboards, handouts, flip charts, DVDs, props, PowerPoints. There are so many different things that you can use, not just, you know, the visual aids that I listed before. Try and also make sure that the lighting is suitable. So if you do have a PowerPoint and you know that you have pupils in that class that, you know, if all of the lights are on, they can't see the board properly because the lights are bouncing off, then make sure that the lights are off. Um, and that they are seated where they are close enough to the board where they can see and read any writing that you have. If you do give handouts to people, like printed out written things, then make sure it's on paper that is best suited to them. If you know that they can read writing if it's on green paper and that's better for them than white, then make sure that every handout you give them is on green paper and that the font is big enough for them to see. Make sure that they can actually read it because some fonts, you know, they're very unlegible, like you can't really read them. If you look at it and you struggle to read it, how do you think someone that's on the spectrum or someone that has learning difficulties is going to be able to read it? What I mean is fonts that are like this, you know, all the swirly ones. I can't read stuff when it's like that, so. I hope you liked this video and it gave you some ideas of the different types of visual aids that you can use. And this is not just for special needs schools, but mainstream schools as well and colleges and universities. It doesn't matter what age you are, you can use any of these visual aids. You just need to make it so it's personalized for you. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and share it around. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button to know when I upload next. My Facebook and Twitter are downstairs as always so you can see what I'm up to and I will see you soon. Bye guys!